Hi, I'm Emma Monet and welcome to my channel. Today on my channel, as you saw from the title, I will be talking about my experience of living in Hong Kong for five weeks. Just a disclaimer, this trip did take place in April and May of 2017. I was not there during the outbreak for the coronavirus, so no, don't act. First things first, in Hong Kong, the time difference right now is 13 hours ahead of where I currently live. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. On top of it being a 13 hour difference, I had to take a 15 hour flight. I got wine drunk the entire time. Um, they served a terrible meal. It was pitiful. I flew from Milwaukee, about a 20 minute flight to Chicago. And when I got there, my layover was only supposed to be about 40 or so minutes. And that turned into a five hour wait. The plane that we were supposed to travel on needed some maintenance done on it. And we ended up flying in a plane that was not nearly as big as the one we were originally supposed to get on. And it didn't even have outlets. So I literally slept and just watched Harry Potter movies throughout the entire flight. And why I actually went to Hong Kong was because I worked for the Cheesecake Factory and I used to go to different places in the country and obviously out of the country and help open up Cheesecake Factories. This was my first international opening. This was my first time leaving the country, my first time leaving the country by myself. Hong Kong is a very, very populated city. I drive on the opposite side of the street in Hong Kong. Obviously, I did not attempt to drive, but the driving there was crazy, okay? Crazy. I felt like I was on Mario Kart and that they get extra points if they try to hit you or something. Like, it seemed like it was fun or a game or something to them to like speed up if you tried to cross the street. Everyone's carrying bags or they have suitcases. People wore their book bags on the front of their chest because apparently pickpocketing is a major thing in Hong Kong. When I'm somewhere that I'm not native from there, I like to blend in. So I wore my bag on the front and I'm like, what, what y'all doing this for? Come to find out, pickpocketers, and because if you have your book bag on your back, either they can easily go in it or they like to take knives and rip a hole in it and all your stuff fall in. And it's so many people out there that you wouldn't even hear or feel. It wasn't a lot of crime that I knew about. I did feel pretty safe walking around. I only had one bad encounter. I was out by myself. I had came back from the markets from shopping and i was down in the subway train station and these two guys i'm pretty sure they were african basically cat called me and there were lots of people around i didn't feel uncomfortable so i just kept it moving but i ended up going out of the train station from a different exit than i normally would just in case i was walking to go get some food and who do i see these same two african guys so at this point one of them decides that it's fake and he begins to follow me he's talking to me what's your facebook what's your whatsapp oh i'm not gonna leave you alone until you tell me your name until you let me get in contact with you oh i want to get to know you you're so beautiful so i ended up going to the restaurant anyway and he was like trying to pay for my food and they're like i'm not getting in it basically they recognized me because i had been in there after a, a few minutes of me being like no like don't take his money like please like i'm begging you kind of realized that the man was harassing me but they still what weren't gonna get in the middle of it so I sat in there and waited for them to finish making my food and he sat there and harassed me the entire time. I left and I was just begging him to please leave me alone and he wouldn't and I was ready to go back to my hotel and lay down. So I just went to the bar that my Cheesecake Factory co-workers hung out at. A lot of the businesses there, they don't actually have front doors. They have like garage open doors so the whole front was open. And I started like running towards the opening and my coworkers were like looking at me like, what is she doing? And I'm like, this man's chasing me, help, help, help. And like three or four of the biggest guys that were on the opening like went out there and like, what are you doing? Leave her alone. And guy ran down the street. That was like the only real danger I ever felt like I was in. Like I never felt like I was being a target. Shit scared the hell out of me. I'm not gonna lie, like I was scared. I was scared, my heart was beating fast. But I did the right things. I stayed in populated areas. 
I did not go back to my place of residency. I went to people that I knew so I could get help and I didn't see or hear from that man ever again. They scared him off real quick. It reminded me a lot of New York, except New York just full of Asian people, honestly. It was beautiful, but still dirty. The like, sides of the street had trash in most places. Like it was just a very congested city. It's a tropical climate. So when I went, it was springtime. So it was hot and humid every day. It was like 80s, 90s. Although the rain was sometimes unbearable. It was a great change of pace. the exact exchange rate of our money with this but I'm pretty sure one American dollar is worth 7.8 Hong Kong dollars. I brought back lots of money with me but I ended up giving a lot of it away as souvenirs. Also very popular there is the octopus car which you load up with money so if you were to use their train or subway station you would just swipe this card on the way in and then swipe it on your way out and it automatically took the amount of money off of your car based on your entry point and your exit point. So this was super convenient and you could also use this at every 7-Eleven, which they had basically on every corner. They had a 7-Eleven, a Starbucks, a McDonald's, and an H&M everywhere. Speaking of McDonald's, they did have a few different items from what we have here in the United States. Now, I don't eat McDonald's, but I went in there because I was told that they have waffle fries. I need for them to get those here in the States, okay? Do you hear me? I'm gonna need those here in the States. There was a lot of different food over there. I did eat a little bit of actual Chinese food, but I didn't eat a lot. I'm a vegetarian, so I didn't have any meat. I don't have any crazy stories about finding out I was eating rat or cats or dogs or anything. I don't even know. They actually do that. Wasn't in the position to find out. I just ate a lot of veggie fried rice and veggie noodle bowls or whatever. It wasn't a lot of variety for me. So I will say this, the sanitation standards are definitely different over there. While I was at one of the restaurants, the Chinese restaurant, I actually seen the person in back preparing my food with a cigarette hanging out his mouth. Like, got it hanging. And he back there whipping it up. That's <laughs> crazy. So when I wasn't working 12 to 14 hour shifts, I did do a couple of things. I met so many nice people from all over the world while I was there. Not a lot of people that look like me in Hong Kong. So whenever I saw brown or black people, they were always nice. Met so many beautiful Filipino people when I was there. I'm taking a trip to the Philippines. The things I did was go and visit the Big Buddha. Big Buddha is where people go to worship. There were hundreds of stairs you had to walk up to get to the top of the Buddha. It was definitely a workout. There's so many hills and mountains that literally everybody almost wore walking shoes. Like there were people in suits with Nikes on. that I did while I was there is visit 10,000 Buddhas and it literally has 10,000 golden Buddhas. There were males, there were females, some were sitting, some were standing. It was amazing. It was beautiful. ended up being one of the most memorable experiences that I had when I was in Hong Kong. We went to the beach for some relaxation. It turned out being the exact opposite. 
we lay down and you know had our coconut water and literally we would just keep seeing people like walk past like had their phones like literally walking right above us so like going like this trying to take photos of us they had tour buses coming in from the mainland and these tour buses came and they weren't used to seeing people that looked like me and when I was at the beach I was with myself a black girl with afro puffs a white girl who had bleach blonde hair and then a white guy so they thought we were famous and I milked it they were all running up screaming we couldn't understand anything they were saying but we knew that they wanted pictures with us so we took pictures and then after about two hours of this it just got overwhelming and we had to actually leave the beach it was my moment in the spotlight I suppose <laughs> I constantly saw people taking photos of me pictures of me sometimes people did actually come up to me and ask like hey can I take a picture of you can I take a picture with you but sometimes I did just catch people in snapchats of me and stuff so that was kind of weird but I was told to expect that before I went there so it wasn't like a total shock but it was still kind of rude I guess So while I was there, obviously I had to go visit the markets. I went to so many malls. The malls are just like our malls basically here. The prices are the same, same type of stuff. But the markets, the markets, that's where you go and no price they tell you is the final price. That's where you go to get your deals, your bargains. That's where I went to go get a lot of souvenirs that I brought back. For example, I brought back chopsticks. I think I got like a pack of eight chopsticks for like two three bucks it was like so cheap and they were all different kinds i bought so much stuff out of the market these scroll paintings another place that i visited while i was there was victoria's peak which is the highest summit in hong kong and you also get a 360 view of the city and it was beautiful i'm so glad we waited and we went when it actually was dark i was in the bar and they actually were playing with khalifa shout out to will shout out to the taylor gang hong kong actually doesn't have any internet restrictions like mainland china does so I could search anything on the internet. I didn't have to like get a VPN or anything like that. Get on Facebook, Snapchat, anything, Instagram. So I took my fire stick, so I just watch TV there. bit about my actual work at Cheesecake Factory. The restaurant was packed. Okay, it was packed every day until the day that I left. Every day we got on a three and a half to four hour wait. And before the people got to the front of the line to put themselves on this three and a half to four hour wait, there was a line to get on the wait list. There was a line that would be from an hour to an hour and a half. And you were told, oh, there's a three and a half to four hour wait. But then on top of that, you have to come back about halfway in between your wait time to pick up a pager because we didn't have enough pagers to give out to the amount of people that were on the wait list. So it turned into a big thing and then it was very hard to estimate the wait times because so many people there, they eat with big groups. Groups of like 10 to 15 push a bunch of tables together and they would all like have their laptops out and they'd sit up and play games against each other. They would sit, they would eat, they would laugh, they would drink, they would chill, eat dessert, drink coffee, and literally sit there and chat until it was time for the next meal. They would sit there for eight hours sometimes. People were there all day. The restaurant was actually short staffed. So the people who were actually there as trainers, we had to work. So we had to work against the language barrier. For most of them, English isn't their first language. So even though they do speak English, it might not have been the best English. And me only speaking English, it was very difficult to deal with some of the customers. I was working, I was working, okay, working. And they was working me. Working with me.
When in Hong Kong. <laughs> That's all for today's story time. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.